Oh 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Well, welcome to Christ Church Brampton on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we hear about the Jesus walking on the water and his call to us living in faith. We begin now with the call for purity. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, everyone. Miss Tina is away this week. And she has asked me to talk to you about things that float and things that sink. So I'm going to do an experiment. I have a bowl of water here and I have some items. And I'm going to see whether they float or sink. I have a, a pretty yellow feather. I have a nice, soft, fuzzy, green pom-pom. I have a ping-pong ball and rather large black rock and a little baby rock. I'd almost call it a pebble. So, let's see what happens. I'm going to start with a nice, fuzzy, green pom-pom ball. Hey, it floats! Okay, well, let's try the beautiful feather. You know the terms, light as a feather. Do you think it'll float or sink? It floats too! That's really cool. Now let me try my ping-pong ball. Another floater. How about my nice big black rock? Ooh, oh, whoa. That sunk big time. Well, I wonder about this little, where'd it go? Oh, my little baby rock, my little pebble. I would think it's so tiny it would float too. Oh, look at that. It sunk too. Hmm. Well, this tells me something. This tells me that some things are made to float and some things are made to sink. And it doesn't really matter whether they're big or tiny. Today's Bible story is about the disciples, Jesus' disciples. They were out on the sea in a boat, and it was nighttime, and it was very stormy, and they were quite scared and anxious because they didn't think they'd be able to make it to the shore. And then, out of nowhere, they see Jesus coming towards them walking on the water. Now, this was a surprise to me. I thought it might float. But one thing I do know, people sink. They don't float. Well, I shouldn't say that. If you've ever taken swimming lessons and you learn that as long as you've got air in your lungs and you kind of distribute your body and on your back maybe in the water, you can float. But have you ever tried going into a swimming pool, walking in from the deck? I've tried it many times and I sink every time. The even stranger thing was that when Jesus approached them walking on the water, he said to Peter, come on, Peter, get out of the boat. 
walk towards me on the water. And you know what was stranger? If Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he didn't sink. He could do it too. So I'm thinking that God's message in that story to us is that, first of all, Jesus did some pretty amazing, miraculous things on this earth. And I think God is also saying that sometimes in life we're going to come across some pretty scary situations. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we'll be able to get through. And we're going to find ourselves doing some pretty amazing things that we didn't think we could ever do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be a friend and a companion for us on our journey. And when things get scary and we think that we're not going to make it and we don't know how we're going to make it, that if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he will lead us through. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 9 to 18. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and there seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there is a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then, he, then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. Throw down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nemshi, as king of over Israel. And you shall appoint Elisha, son of Sabbat of El Moah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I have been, yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that I have not bowed to Baal, and every word that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. One of the most crippling forces in human life is fear. Fear can sap our energy, stifle our creativity, inhibit our journey, and keep us from living into our God-given life. But certain kinds of fear can be essential for survival, can be good. We train our kids, after all, to fear fire, electrical outlets, unknown dogs, and busy traffic. A good thing. We can also, however, pass on some of our irrational fears, like being terrified of the dark, or being afraid of meeting different people, or of trying a new thing. But hopefully, with patience, and most especially with love, we can all grow beyond our fears. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about fear, particularly in response to God's presence and God's call. If you're not Mary, the Lord is with you. Joseph got the same message when he was about to call off his forthcoming engagement with Mary. And then there were the shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Fear not, said the angel, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy for all people. In today's gospel reading, we have another story of human fear and anxiety. Following the feeding of the multitude, Jesus sent his disciples back across the lake while he went up to a nearby mountain to pray. Now, as the twelve tried to cross the lake, they got caught in a violent storm. Their efforts to reach the other side or just to stabilize the boat were all in vain, and they began to sink. Now, in this gospel account, we have three examples of fear. First, the situation itself, the response to the situation itself. Uh, after all, it was life-threatening. They were in a small boat in a violent storm. And then there's the reaction of Jesus, or rather, reaction of the disciples to the presence of Jesus in the midst of this. At first, they thought it was a ghost. 
as Matthew reports. Um, because after all, Jesus was out on the water, as depicted in the Gospel of Matthew. And Jesus calmed the disciples with this wonderful word, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Now, the third example of panic is found in the brief story of, of Peter jumping into the water, uh, <laughs> jumping into the boat, and uh, beginning to sink. Because there's, there's this dynamic in this story in Matthew where it depicts uh, Peter as you know, impulsive and, and kind of representative of all followers of Jesus. At first, he draws near to Jesus with confidence, but then he gets distracted by his circumstance and situation the elements around him in a literal sense, the driving wind, the swirling waves, and he begins to sink. So my friends, how are you doing today? How are you in your context? Are you feeling as if you're beginning to sink? It's noteworthy that as long as Peter focuses on Jesus, he is upheld in the storm. But when he becomes distracted by the impending chaos, he starts to go under. And in all of this, Jesus reaches out to him, calms him, reassures him of his presence, and says, you have little faith. Why, why did you doubt? Okay, let's all take a step back from this story. Let's be honest. Uh, can we not all identify with Peter here? The truth is we can all become immobilized by fear. Fear and worry. Worry can, and fear can rob us of our freedom, the fr freedom to participate in all of what God has for us in life. Our fears can focus on the unknown, things that we might think might happen, like a torment or a shame or anything, something that would even haunt us. And such worry threatens to distract us from our vision, purpose, and our very lives. Fear has the potential to rob us from life abundant and to eat out the heart of our peace. And in the end, it can even threaten to keep us obsessed with ourselves. But the good news of the gospel is that God deeply and personally cares for each and every one of us. And when we overlook that fact, or forget that fact, we can lose our bearings in the storm. You know, the truth is, and the good news is this, we can't manage everything by ourselves. We need the help of others, family, friends, and neighbors. We need the help of God himself. Now, friends, years ago, I used to be a cop, and one of the things that I found different about police work as opposed to being a pastor, is that in police work, you, you could have this sense of getting it all done, right? You could uh, investigate an occurrence, lay the appropriate charge, prepare the crown brief, see it all route through to completion uh, in the trial process. You could keep current on all of your cases and files. And when you had your work done, hey, you could go up and play, uh, you know, run some radar, you know, uh, check some boats, see some fishermen. Have a free coffee at Tim Hortons. <laughs> but, you know, life for a priest is a little bit different. You never get it all done. It's, it's kind of like parenthood. You never score the final touchdown. Uh, there, there is no way uh, that all of it will be done because the mission of the church transcends and goes beyond any one of us and even our time in this community. We have to all learn again and again to rely upon each other's gifts and being aware of each other's limitations as well, sharing ministry with others. Now, another truth about life is that life is not all rosy and pain-free. Real life in the real world is marked by our own and other people's challenges, our own and other people's weaknesses. In the real world, life isn't about Life isn't always fair or comfortable or serene. And to maintain otherwise, frankly, isn't Christianity. That's wishful thinking. But Jesus told his, his disciples, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And the truth is that sometimes 
Our own growth can come through failure as much as it can come through success. And God is not always going to take away our challenging situations, but God's loving presence will always be with us to support and strengthen us in those situations. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never been a fan of heights. The truth is, I can get vertigo at times by even, you know, sitting in the balcony here at the church. Or how about this one? I can get vertigo sitting at Roy Thompson Hall and looking into the ceiling. I have to manage again and again my natural fear of heights. Now, uh, I don't like doing ladders, but I do them. And every time I do them, I'm glad I did. Because, well, those leaves don't come out of the eaves trough by themselves. Now, I want to tell you a little story about how I learned a little bit about this. Way back when, when I was in the Army Reserve, I had occasion to be confronted by this within myself uh, Why actually taking a particular course. And uh, one, uh, one instance, we left Ottawa via Army helicopters, and it was July, it was the hottest day of July, and guess what? They left the tailgate open. And of course, as the, as the helicopter lifted, we all had a good chance of looking at the ground below disappear underneath us, and I could, could feel myself turning green. But somehow I got there by God's grace, and all was good. And guess what we did later that day? We learned how to rappel off a very high tower. I wasn't so keen on the idea, but after lunch we were all formed up, and we all had to climb a bunch of series of ladders to the top of the tower. And when I got to the tower, in truth, I was feeling pretty green. I can remember closing my eyes saying a quick prayer, and, and uh, I, I, you know, just kind of deeply breathing. And out of the corner of my eye, Sergeant Major Rockheim, one of these guys with big trees for biceps, looked at me and in a particularly uh, army, army way, shouted out, What's the matter with you, Gilmore? Something happened and reset within me. And I said to him, Nothing. And there was that really beautiful hint of a smile on his face, knowing that I was going to be okay. And there in that moment, I knew that my training, my equipment had been checked, I had my comrades with me, I was going to be okay. Off I went, off the tower. And I can remember thinking, well, for somebody who doesn't like heights, this was actually a joy to be coached through that. You know, the truth is, I still don't like ladders, but I do them. And let me tell you, if I'm ever on an airplane and it's going to crash, yes, I'll put on an air, 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 a, a parachute and I'm out the door. But if that airplane is going to safely land, I don't feel the need to do any sky jumping. I share this story with you because, well, it's just a way for us to learn beyond our fear. For our own maturity and for our own growth, it's important to face our fears again and again not to ignore them, not to, uh, uh, but not let them debilitate us. Now, don't get me wrong. People don't have to become paratroopers or jump out of aircraft. I'm not planning on doing it. But there are some limited and, and measurable ways that we can learn from the things that we're afraid of. In uncertain times, we can all become afraid of all sorts and things that are indeed very real. What about job loss? What about loss of income, health, and well-being? Those are very real. Where will the money come, to, come from to pay for grass, gas, groceries, university tuition, taxes, retirement, or unexpected expenses? On the eve of the Second World War, King George VI addressed the Commonwealth. And this famous speech, the King's Speech, was broadcasted across Canada on the CBC. And he said these now famous words. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the new year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be better than light and safer than the known way. 
When we look fear in the eye and step out in faith, fear can no longer bind us. The truth is, the more we confront our hidden fears, the freer we will be to live in peace. When we recognize our fear in the light of God's love, worry and fretfulness no longer has that power. And so we can join with the psalmist in Psalm 46. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us courage to bring our fears to you. Open our lives to your healing love. Realign our fragmented loyalties, disillusionments, and frustrations. Transform our concern that gets so easily twisted into fretfulness. In our desire for security, keep us from greed and materialism. Accept our hunger for your presence and reach out and bring us to yourself. Help us always to hear your voice as you say. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in faith, from the nations of the earth, God has called forth one people to be the sign of the unity intended for all humankind. Let us offer our prayers of the church and for its mission in the world, saying, Lord, hear our prayer for the people of the earth that where there is strife and division the gift of peace may be the reward of all who work for justice let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for the Church of Jesus Christ that where there is weakness health may be restored and where there is division unity may be nourished let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for all those at Christ Church, for Reverend Byron, for Reverend Michelle, for Martha, for Tina, for Sally and the praise team, for Ron and the choir, for Mr. and Mrs. White, and for Mr. Neelam, and all those who volunteer to make Sundays on YouTube possible. We pray that you may bless them and keep them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the leaders in the church, that where there is jealousy or distrust, a spirit of forgiveness and compassion may nurture humble service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are called to preach the gospel, that in the presence of fear and anxiety, the message of hope may be proclaimed courageously and effectively. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all missionaries in foreign lands, that when faced with hardship and testing, they may be strengthened in their mission by the Spirit of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community and our families, that where there is misunderstanding or discord, we may receive the grace to forgive and so rejoice in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for Justin, our Prime Minister, for Doug, our Premier, for Patrick, our Mayor,
For all those in leadership in Canada and across the world, may you give them guidance and strength during this time of uncertainty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of unity and peace, in baptism you have made us one people in the body of your Son. Hear us as with one voice we offer you these prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them into his presence. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are pilgrims on a journey, we are travelers on the road, we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. Will you let me be your servant? Will me be as Christ to you, so that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. Let us pray. Father, receive all we offer you this day. May we be enriched by the gifts of the Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, grant to your church the unity and the peace that is yours for the offering, the fruit of your life-giving spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I just want to say a special welcome to all of you who are visiting us for the first time today and coming through our virtual walls. We invite you to please reach out to us and uh, let yourself be known, contacting the church office. You can get that information, that contact information, through our website. Now let us sing together our final hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.